deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he would give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scars. Good morning, North Livingston. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, got a couple of uh, housekeeping things I want to get taken care of before I have you stand. We have some thank you notes that have come in. Uh, to North Livingston Baptist, thanks for the Thanksgiving baskets from Billy Hall. A thank you. Uh, words alone cannot express my sincerest thanks for your Thanksgiving basket. Warmly, sincerely, and gratefully, this message is coming. Along with a thank you, it's bringing a wish that life's happiest things come your way. May God bless you, your family, and the church family. Congrat uh, thank you for the, the Thanksgiving basket. Sincerely, Gloria Tidwell. And then we have a thank you from our Gideon speaker, uh, praying for you. Uh, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Lord make his face shine upon thee, be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance unto thee and give thee peace. And then he, the Gideon speaker has donated uh, five Bibles in honor of North Livingston Baptist Church and in thanks for uh, our uh, donation to the Gideons this year. So we appreciate those uh, items of thanks, thanks to our church. Uh, also, by way of reminding you, uh, immediately following service this morning, we have a brief business meeting. So if you call North Livingston Baptist, your home church, we encourage you to stay for the business meeting. Um, offering envelopes are on the back uh, uh, speaker table. And so if you need your offering envelopes for next year, pick those up. And then this afternoon, uh, the, uh, toy gift, the toys and the gift distribution for all of our teen kids and the distribution for the toys that were given uh, from the community through TAMCO. Uh, those will all be distributed this afternoon. And a lot of thanks to the ladies of the church. They've done a lot of work this week in getting that all ready. Uh, and if you get a chance uh, uh, on your way out, look into Brother Eric's Sunday school room. They've got a room full uh, of the things that are going out this afternoon. So we appreciate all of your efforts in that and all of those that donated in the community. Uh, if you will, let's stand as we go to the Lord at a time of prayer. The prayer list, of course, on the, the board, on the screen, uh, several uh, updates to the prayer list. Let's continue to lift those up. Lift those up in our community that are bereaved. Uh, we've still had those in our community this week that have lost loved ones. Uh, some very, uh, uh, very sad experiences this week in our community. Lift those up. Uh, some that have been affected by COVID. Some that have lost family members to COVID this week. Continue to pray for those families. And also pray for all those just affected. A lot of people in our, our immediate area that have the virus. And to pray for those families and all that that involves with the quarantining and the schools and the work. And uh, just so much on that. So we want to continue to pray for that. Pray for our country. Uh, pray for uh, still decisions to be made. And pray for the leadership of our country. And then uh, wisdom for those that will be leading us. Just ask that God's... Uh, uh, it, 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 uh, America has always, our country has always needed God's guidance, but certainly uh, today I think we're well aware that we need God's direction and, and leadership, and so we just ask God to extend mercies to our country. Do you have updates for those that need to be added to the prayer list? <laughs> Tina will be going this week for more treatment. Remember her and Joe, uh, they will be uh, in Nashville for a few days. And so pray for her, and then after the treatment, of course, all of the effect of, of the treatment, pray that this is effective, so continue to lift them up. Are there others? Don't you remember the Carl Coleman family? All right, remember this family? 
any others. All right, let's go to the Lord in the time of prayer. Father, we thank you for this Lord's Day. God, we thank you for the Thanksgiving season, the Christmas season. God, we are so thankful as we're reminded, uh, not, not just the celebration of Christmas, but the gift of Jesus, our Redeemer, coming to this earth. God, his willingness, your plan, for salvation for us. And God, in that atonement, you provided for healing. And God, we're just so grateful for that today. And as we come to you today, we come with thankful hearts. And yet we come with hearts that are burdened for those in our community, those in our, our family, those within our, our, our friendship and our workplaces. God, so many that are affected by sickness. God, those that have test results, awaiting test results, those that are, are facing surgery in, in the upcoming weeks. And, and Father, we just lift those. And as each family member, each one here, each one hearing by way of Internet today, God, as they're mentioning those particularly dear on their heart, their circumstance, their situation, their relationship, their financial issue. And God, each one praying to you right now. And God, you hear us all at the same time. And not just here, but... But God, you, you, everything that's important to us, God, that's important to you. And Jesus is at your right hand making intercession today. And God, what, a, what an encouragement that is to us. And so God, as we lift these names and these situations, God, some that only you can take care of. God, those that are bereaved, only your peace can, can help them in, in this time. And God, while we try to give words of comfort and gifts and and yet, God, we know that it's your peace ultimately that they need. And so we ask for that. We ask for your direction. God, we ask for our country. We ask for our, our community leadership, our school leadership. God, even those in our workplaces, we ask, God, that you just give them direction, give them wisdom, give them guidance as they make the decisions. And even us in the church, God, give us the wisdom that we need to do to be in the center of your will. And then, Father, as we've gathered here today, God, we... We want to lift your name this morning in, in honor and worship as we think of you and all you've done for us. And again, our, our hearts are just blessed and we're thankful. And God, as we look into the word in just a moment, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit's anointing would be in this place. And to those that are listening today, and God, that the Holy Spirit would just open this word. Let this word challenge us. Let this word encourage us. Let this word guide us in seeing that your plan and your promises, God, they're always yes and amen. God, you always fulfill your promise. And again, for that, we're thankful. We ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place today and just to anoint our hearts and our minds. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. It's in the name of Jesus we commit this service. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. We are in the midst of our Lottie Moon uh, offering and prayer emphasis for December for our international missions. Uh, we missed Joan being out last week, but Joan, if you will come and share with us, and uh, I believe we have a video today also on what's going on with the missions. First of all, when you look around, isn't the church beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? I'm sitting there looking at all these contenders, and I thought, hmm. What if I just took my home and made the media would notice? <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. You'll see a beautiful job as always. Today we are, and also I'm just an embarrassed statement. Congratulations, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> and he did really good. He did a beautiful <laughs> readout. So if you ever need anybody to help you, just ask us. <laughs> As you have always told Brother Danny, and always it's a ship, every ship comes in at a different time. So you've got the whole month of December to give. I told Amelia the wrong thing. So when you see on the board, our goal was $1,575. And I made a mistake and told her $1,500. That's not her fault. That's not the set. So, but the goal is $1,575. So, but as today the video we're going to see, is in the Amazon. And when you see this video, I'm asking you all once again, every person you see on that video, God made that person. And you'll see children, and, and look at your eyes, 
with your eyes still in your heart and you need to know Jesus, that they are an indigenous people and they haven't had the chance to do the work. You're way out in the Amazon and you see this video and the only thing is to jump for me and just have to sit down here and, and sit here and sit there. I want you to just watch this video and ask the Lord to speak to your heart on what he wants you to do. We are so blessed. I mean, look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We are so rich here. It's a low, sweet, low, rich. And there's so many people that don't know Jesus Christ. Look at all of you all. I'm looking at all of you, love all of you. And if I was speaking for all of you, I would say every one of you know Jesus Christ. But there's so many people in the world that don't. And one day we're all going to meet Jesus. We're going to meet him. And we're either going to know him or we're not going to know him. So I pray that you ask the Lord what he would have you to give. I want you to watch this video. And I'm asking that the Lord open your heart to what God wants you to see. Not what I'm talking about. I want him to show you what he wants you to see. And I, I, our poster, all that blurriness is just showing you how big the world is and how fast it's moving and whether people are actually seeing Jesus. Is he see, are they seeing Jesus in us? So it's, it's a great multitude plus you, plus you, plus all of us. It takes all of us to do God's work, but everything that is given to Lottie Moon goes to help our missionaries. And when you see this video today, you're gonna to sit there and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you that someone foresaw a program that will help our missionaries tell someone about Jesus Christ. And at this time, and I'm gonna do it a little different, I'm gonna ask Brother Bob Wood if he would lead us in prayer for what you are gonna to see today, and then I'm gonna ask Joyce to show the video. Would you lead us in prayer, Bob? We have certain stories in the New Testament like the parable of the lost sheep where you leave 99 to go find the one. And so God doesn't forsake that one lost sheep. You have these small micro people groups where the gospel has not flowed yet because of geography, because of distance, because of cost, because of uh, culture, because of racism. I really feel that these micro peoples are part of his heart to go after all the sheep, to go after that remnant. In the Amazon, you can go a day without seeing another living soul, which is kind of freaky. But a lot of the reason why you can't see people is because they're hidden. These are hidden peoples, small in population, widely dispersed. They have centuries of a bloody history where they've been exploited. They're animists, they believe in spirits. When you live that way, you tend to be dominated by fear. I see marginalized people, I see forgotten people, I see invisible people that are in desperate need of the gospel. The area is massive, and so to get from where I live, which is already a jungle city, I have to get into a land plane and fly to another port city, and then the next day we'd get in a boat, and in this slow boat we travel sometimes three days to get to where we're going. Because we're going into areas where the gospel is not, sometimes it just takes time. But recently we have noticed just God opening some doors. God has been working to send out missionaries, indigenous men and women, where there's no evangelical presence. A well-trained and called indigenous man will be much more effective. They tend to be able to get into hard reach areas without government restrictions. You have fewer language limitations. A lot of my work is training them. So if I want to teach an indigenous man how to do story, he has to see me do it first. Then after a while of walking alongside, he's very capable at that point. One partner in particular, he wants to go work with a group that has killed outsiders that have walked in. He's like, I don't care. God sent me to go do it. And this is such a, a 180 from most indigenous culture that you have to look at him and say, God brought this change to this man. 
Do you see families coming to Christ? Do you see village headmans getting permission to come in? It really confirms everything that we're out there to do, to go out and make disciples of all nations. When we have those things happen, we sit back and go, okay, this is what it's all about. They can go and they can teach others, and those people can teach others. I want to see this momentum like a wave through the jungle where I can say, look, I didn't see it happen, I wasn't there, but I know the gospel has reached these dark corners. When supporters of the Lottie Moon Christmas offering gives, it allows us to do things like buy an outboard motor that gets us up river, to get equipment that we need to help us stay out there in the jungle. I've been supported by Lottie Moon. Y'all's generosity is, is a luxury that I never want to take for granted. So I want to say thank you for that. God is faithful in the hard times as he is in the good times, and our mandate doesn't change. These people groups in the jungle, you could be born, live, and die without ever hearing the name of our Savior. So someone has to go, because if we don't go, no one's going to go. If we don't train people to go, no one's going to go. It's worth it. Good morning. Thank you, Joan, for the video and being our cheerleader to to give and support our missionaries. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning. We got any birthdays or anniversaries? It's good to see each and every one of you this morning, and the church does look beautiful this morning. We thank Amelia and Charlene for that. Um, stuff don't just happen, but we we thank y'all for your dedication of doing that for us. Love this time of the year, and I thank God that He gave His only Son to come for each one of us because we needed a Savior. Joy to the world. Let's just sing out, make a joyful noise to the Lord this morning. next song we're going to sing is Oh Holy Night. I love this song. 
just think back some 2,000 years ago when Jesus come and was in that little cradle. How he come to die for each and every one of us.
thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord, that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one, Lord, that's come this way to make this possible today, Lord. And we thank you for those that are viewing their service from home today, God. We just pray that you would touch their hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for giving yourself for each and every one of us. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the meaning of this season. God, we know there's people throughout the world that celebrate this day. And, Lord, there's some that don't know the true meaning. And, God, I pray that they would before it's ever too late. Holy Spirit, move in and throughout this place today. God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us and your many blessings that you bless us with. Pray your anointing, Lord, upon Brother Danny, Lord. Anoint him from the top of his head to the very sole of his feet as he speaks your words. In Christ Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I want to ask, if you will, if you open your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter number 2. Luke, chapter number 2. As we begin a Christmas message, probably if you were to venture a guess as to where we're going to turn in the Scriptures, Luke chapter 2 would be one of the ones that you would pick. Uh, as I was thinking this week along the message, along the line of the message, and I opened the Bible and I was thinking of Luke chapter number 2, uh, I try to jot in the margin of my Bible when I do a sermon, the title of the sermon, the Scriptures I use, and the date. And if it's uh, not at church here, if it's speaking somewhere else, a funeral or something, I usually try to dot, jot uh, in there just to, to kind of keep a, a journal of where I've spoken. And when I turn to Luke chapter number two uh, this week uh, and, and the thinking of this message and uh, trying to develop this message, uh, I notice Luke chapter number two, uh, verses uh, nine through 14, the exact passage was the exact passage I used a year ago today. But uh, it was a totally different message. Last year, uh, I spoke on the message of peace uh, that the angels delivered. Uh, today's message is the angels of Christmas. I want to, to look more at the angels themselves and the ministry of the angels and God using the angels. The first, uh, uh, after God uh, made the pronouncement of the Redeemer who would come uh, all the way back in Genesis uh, when we get to the Gospels, the first that tells the story, begins the story is the angels. And uh, as I was looking at that message title from last year and I uh, saw that message title, the angels giving the pronouncement of peace, and I thought, my, it uh, has almost been anything but peaceful this year uh, with all that we've gone through, all the chaos. And little did we know uh, Christmas of last year of what this year would bring. And the same, uh, little do we know uh, what's going to happen even before Christmas this year or what the new year will bring. Or even if there is a new year with the way things are happening, we may uh, be celebrating Christmas in heaven with Jesus and that would be okay with me. Uh, I, would, I would be totally fine with that uh, other than there are many that are still out as we've seen in the video, uh, many that still don't know Christ as Savior. And so the urgency tells us the urgency of the hour. Uh, but as we look at Luke chapter number two and thinking about the angels when you think of angels, uh, I, I think many times we get the picture of an angel. We see uh, uh, the angels when we think of the angels worshiping God in heaven. And uh, I think of the angel on top of the Christmas tree. I think of the angel with the, the gown and the wings and the long blonde hair. And uh, uh, the second uh, vision I get of angels when I think of angels are, are the little uh, chubby uh, diaper clad, little uh, fat cheeked, red, rosy red cheeked cherub uh, angels. We think of those, you know, the Valentine Cupid angel when we think of angels. And so when we read the Christmas story, I think many times we get in mind, uh, uh, we have the Christmas plays, we, we, we dress the children up with the little halo, the little tinsel halo and, and the little uh, poster board wings on their back and the little uh, long robe that sometimes we make out of a sheet or a pillowcase uh, for the little ones to, to look like what our picture of an angel is. But when we think of the angels in the Christmas story, uh, I think it's far from 
uh, what we typically think of as angels. And I want to show you that in just a moment. And what, what I think God was doing, what God was preparing uh, in sending those angels, as we see here in Luke chapter number 2, uh, we get the announcement of the angels coming. God used angels uh, all throughout Scripture. Um, angels are not something that uh, people become when they die. Uh, I don't know how many times you hear uh, when someone loses a loved one and they say, well, they got their angel wings. Uh, and we kind of dismiss that and go on, but there couldn't be anything further from the truth. Uh, the angels are created beings. We, you know, when we pass from this life into eternity, we do not become angels. Uh, angels are created beings, much like humans are created beings, but we're created different. Uh, we have a different purpose and we have a different existence and a different appearance. And so when you think of the angels, um, all throughout scripture, as I said, God used the angels and the definition of an angel is a messenger. And so God used the angels in that capacity. We read in, in Genesis chapter 18, we read where the angels came to Abraham and Sarah. Uh, you'll remember the angel gave them the announcement that uh, Sarah was going to have a child. You go to Exodus, uh, you find a different picture of an angel. This angel in the book of Exodus uh, appears in a burning bush and tells Moses that he's going to uh, lead Israel out of slavery in, in that Egyptian bondage. In Joshua, um, Joshua chapter number five, God uses the angels to announce the the battle plan for conquering Jericho. Uh, it's the angels that come and tell Joshua, this is, is what you do. This is how you do it. These are the instructions that God wants you to follow. Uh, in Judges chapter six, uh, it's the angel that comes to Gideon and tells Gideon that God is going to use him. And it's the angel that comes and tells him, your, your army is too big. And this is what you've got to do. And it's the angel that encourages Gideon to take the, the army down to the, the water and tells him, uh, let them drink. And when they drink, you watch them. And this is how you're going to trim the army down. Now, also in Judges, it was, it was the angels that came to Samson's parents and told them that they would have a son and that uh, uh, what Samson would be and how Samson was to be raised. In the book of Zechariah, uh, it was the announcement, the whole book of an angel uh, telling the fate of Israel uh, because of their disobedience to God. And then you come to the New Testament in Luke chapter number one. Uh, it's the angel that first comes uh, to Zechariah the priest and tells him uh, that he and his wife Elizabeth are going to have a son. And that's going to be the forerunner of this new Messiah that's coming. Uh, he's going to be called John uh, we know him as John the Baptist. And you remember uh, Zechariah, uh, because of the angel's pronouncement, Zechariah couldn't speak. Uh, and then when John was born uh, and the angel was present and they were asking, what's his name going to be? And everybody expected he's going to be called after his father, Zechariah. Uh, but because of that angel's pronouncement, uh, the first thing Zechariah was able to say after that nine months of not being able to speak was his name will be John, and that was the angel's pronouncement. In Luke chapter 1 also, uh, the angel came to a little teenage girl, just a young virgin girl, and changed her life forever, telling her that God has chosen you. You're the handmaiden. God's going to use you uh, if you're willing. You will be the vessel that will bring God's son into this world. And so it was the angel that made that announcement. It was the angel that came to Joseph in a dream and told Joseph, don't put her away. Uh, what, what's happening? This is of God. This is God's plan and you're part of that plan. And so God uses angels over and over again. I've never had the, uh, uh, the experience that I know of meeting an angel. Uh, I've had things happen that have made me kind of wonder if it wasn't maybe an angel, someone you met and they did something in your life and you never saw them again. I remember uh, Sister Donna had an uncle uh, that, that uh, his testimony was of experiencing a, an interaction with an angel many years ago down uh, by the Ohio River, uh, down in the bottoms. He was, he was putting out a crop uh, and they were in the, the readying for a revival. 
And out in the middle of the field, he had an interaction with, with what he just knew from that point on. He had an interaction with an angel uh, that told him about this revival they were going to have and how that would happen. And, and Uncle Gordon always talked about uh, his interaction with the angel. We had a very dear friend uh, that just a few years ago was very critically ill in Vanderbilt Hospital and going through a real trial. And I remember her sharing how the doctors and nurses had come in and had tried and tried and, and they just couldn't get the, the, I believe it was an IV they were trying to get in and they just couldn't get it in. And uh, she had a, a woman that came in and got the IV in, got it started, and then that woman left and she, she was telling the story and all of the other hospital staff could not figure out who this nurse was. Nobody knew her. Uh, this woman never saw her again and she just knew uh, that God had sent an angel to minister to her. We think, well, that's foolish. Um, you know, that's somebody that's just delirious and thinking that. And then you open the Bible to the book of Luke and you read about a bunch of common shepherd men. And they're out on the hillside late at night doing their job, taking care of their sheep. Shepherds were not... Uh, not, not of a class of people that uh, uh, were well regarded in the community. They weren't somebody that everybody wanted to be around. Uh, shepherds were some of the lower class as far as their jobs and, and their position in society. And yet when God was getting ready to send the Redeemer, when it was time for the Messiah to be born, one of the first that got the announcement that this is the night, this is him, and this is where you'll find him, and this is how you'll know it's him. It was to some of those lowest on society's class rung, the shepherds out on the hillside. And as we read the story in Luke chapter number two, God begins the story, Luke records it, of at first one angel comes. Now, when we read the story here in just a moment, pay attention this, I don't think, is a little rosy cheek, chubby, diaper clad, you know, little flying around baby Cupid type angel. I don't think this is an angel with a halo, with wings and a long flowing robe. Because when the shepherds encounter this angel, they're frightened. The appearance of this angel was something that startled them. And then as you read on, you find that these angels are described in terms of a military group. When the scripture uses the term a host, we'll see in just a moment that word host in the Hebrew, it's a military group. And so I believe when God was announcing that Jesus was coming, I believe he sent those from heaven that were responsible in part for when there was war in heaven because the scripture talks about a time when there was a war in heaven and the angels were involved. The scriptures talk about the angels in the terms of an encampment. The scriptures talks about angels in the terms of their command structure like you would think of a, of a military structure. So I believe these are angels that appear as soldiers. These are angels that appear prepared to fight. Um, these are angels that are prepared to get the job done for God, if you will. And so as you stand, as you turn to Luke chapter number two, if you have your Bibles with you, and if not, it is on the wall. And, and I'm going to be reading uh, this morning from the King James Version for this particular part of the scripture. In Luke chapter number two, you know, I generally use the Holman, but I love the King James. I love the way the King James reads. And I've often told you when I'm quoting scripture, it's just because I cut my teeth on the King James. I, I, I like to study the Holman, the Christian standard. But when I, when I quote scripture, I quote King James because that's what I grew up on. In the particular of the Christmas story, I just love the way the King James reads. Some people say, well, I can't get all the these and the thous, but there's just something about the way that God puts this here. So Luke chapter number two, beginning at verse number nine. And right now we're going through verse number 12. You get that picture of the shepherds out on the hillside tending their sheep. And Luke tells the story. And lo, the angel, one singular, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory 
of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. God, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for the poetry of how Luke chapter two reads, but God, we thank you for the vision that you didn't bring the announcement to the ruling class, to the kings or the presidents or the wealthy, but God, you wanted it to be known that Jesus came for all people. And so, God, you came to those shepherds at work out on the Judean hillside tending their sheep because the message truly was to all people. God, I pray today that as we look at the angels, God, that you would help us to see the importance of your messengers, how that your messengers are varied and different just as we are all varied and different, just as we have a commission to be your messengers also. God, may we take advantage of the season of Christmas to tell the good news, to tell the story, not just of baby Jesus, but of the God that sent him. And Father, what you've done in our lives that we would tell our story that we would share the good news that Jesus is available to all, that he came to die for our sins and that he did in fact pay the penalty for our sins so that we can know peace in this life and know heaven for all eternity. God, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit today as we look into these words that you would use these to challenge us, to encourage us, to teach us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. We commit this service and all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. We get the picture in our mind as Luke tells the story here, a, a picture of a celebration that's going on. I believe the night that Jesus was born because God had given this promise some 4,000 years earlier. And the Bible tells us when the time was right, when everything was just where God needed it to be, when God had all of history, the Romans had taken over much of the known world, the Greek language was known in most of the world, there was upheaval and chaos politically and socially and economically. I think the time that Jesus was born, when you study world history, when you study the Middle East history, Politically and economically and socially, they were going through much the same as we are today in America. Chaos and confusion and questions about tomorrow and the future, apprehension about what tomorrow is going to bring, and yet God had a plan to fulfill his promise, and God did exactly what he said he would do when the time was right. And so Christmas is a reminder to us, we serve the same God that Joseph and Mary served some 2,000 years ago. And God has promises for us, a future for us, a plan for us, and he will fulfill that plan and that purpose for us collectively and individually, as a nation, as a church, as families, and us individually, he will fulfill his promises just as he did. So we get that picture of that night that Jesus was born. And I believe there was a great celebration going on in heaven. You know, the Bible tells us that there's a, a celebration every time someone is saved on the earth. That, that heaven rejoices because somebody has been saved for all eternity 
spared from the penalty of the sin, the wages of sin, known as death or separation from God for all eternity. And so when someone is saved, there's a celebration. And just as much, I think because of what Jesus' coming meant, there was a celebration in heaven on that night, whether it was December 25th, I really even doubt that. What night it was, what month it was, that's, that's not really the important thing. The, port, the important thing is that God did fulfill what he said he would do and Jesus was born and all of history bears that out. As much as people would want to say, well, Christianity and the gospel and God and church, that's just for, for weak-minded people. No, history bears out that God is who he says he is, that Jesus is who he said he was, that he did come, he lived, he died, and he's not dead now. All of history, not just biblical history, but world history, tells us that that did in fact happen if we're honest as we study it. And so I believe on that night there was a celebration and as much as there was a celebration in heaven, that celebration spilled over onto this earth. And how it was carried out was those shepherds on that Judean hillside and that angel, that singular angel that came and his presence was such, the, the visibility of him, his visage, how he appeared was such that it, it struck fear to those shepherds. And so the first thing that the angel said, not just that the Messiah has come and this is where you can find him and this is how you'll know who he is, but the first thing the angel had to say was don't be afraid. And that message from God is true to us today. In all of the chaos, in all of the confusion and in all of the trouble and in all of the unanswered questions about what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, when we're born again, God's message to us is, don't be afraid. <laughs> I bring you good tidings. I bring you good news. And in the end, it's going to be great joy because God has a plan and a purpose and he's going to carry it out. Now, I don't know how. I'm asking God, how is this going to happen? And sometimes God doesn't tell us immediately. Those that had, had prophesied and those that God had said and told, there's going to be a Messiah, a Redeemer, he's going to come. And they spent their entire lives waiting and watching and looking and preaching and teaching and telling. And they just knew it was going to happen in their lifetime. But when the time was fulfilled, when the time was right, God sent his son into this world. And so those shepherds keeping constant watch out in the, the night skies waiting wandering, no doubt just doing their job and, and probably even some of them just not even, maybe not even thinking spiritually. And yet God sends the angel and that first angel arrived. And the scriptures tells us, God tells us here through Luke that when he came, there shone a bright light and it lit up the night sky. And his presence, the, the presence of God, the presence of Jesus made such a difference that it, it even impacted the physical night that they were in. And the message, the celebration of this angel that he brought, he said, this is to be good news for all people. What does that mean? All people. That means that God's plan of salvation, God's plan for this Messiah, for this Redeemer, it's offered to anybody and to everybody regardless of our status in life. When I watch the videos and I hear of these in the Amazon jungle, I hear of these that, that believe in all of the spirits and, and, and they live with the, the voodoo and so much fear in their life and and you read about the missionaries that God has called and, and like the ones shared that he, he has to fly the plane into another city and then he gets on a boat and he has to travel for days 
And then they travel as far as they can sometimes by, by, by rugged terrain vehicle or they have to travel on horseback or muleback or many even have to travel by foot because one soul, one soul is so valuable and yet we are so blessed with so many comforts and as Joan said, the poorest of us are well off when you consider the standards of the people in most of the world today. That's why I feel like if God's judgment came on America and I'm praying for God's mercy, but if his judgment, and I believe it is coming, we're experiencing part of it, we're gonna see more of it because God is just. And I think God is going to have to take the American church and he's gonna to have to pick us up by the shirt collar and he's gonna to have to shake us and he's gonna to have to awaken us and he's going to have to get us not to take everything for granted, to realize that we've had it so easy that we've just taken it for granted and yet so many around us are not hearing the gospel and it's our fault. Oh, we'll send the money for somebody to go overseas. But you see, there's those across the street from us, across the aisle from us at the workplace, sitting next to us in our seats at the school neighbors all around us that don't know Jesus as Savior. And yet it was so important to God that he sent his only begotten son that all people, whosoever, and he commissioned us to reach that whosoever. And so when he says, I bring you good tidings of great joy and it shall be for all people, that means everybody, the poor, the rich, and everyone in between. It means the red, the yellow, the black, the white, all colors of people. Everybody. The little ones, the, 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 the big ones, the ones that, that we think, I don't want to have anything to do with them because of their lifestyle. And yet their soul is so valuable to God that he uses the church, he commissions the church, he calls each of us to share that good news. All people means everybody. Romans chapter five and verse 18. So then as through one trespass, because of Adam, because of Eve, because of one sin, everybody is doomed because of sin to hell. But God had a plan. And God fulfilled that plan. We're reading about it right here. And so Paul tells the Romans, because all through one trespass, there's condemnation for everybody. Oh, also, so also through one righteous act, because of that birth, because of that Messiah, there is life giving justification for everyone. Salvation is to be made available to everyone. And so that message that is for all people centers around what that angel came to tell, what God did on that first Christmas, what God did in sending Jesus to this earth is he intersected all time, all history. And Jesus was sent the presence of the Savior was sent to this earth so that everyone could be saved. Everyone has the need to be saved. Romans 3 and 23 tells us that all have sinned. That means everybody before the age of accountability, after the age of accountability, everybody is responsible for their sin, is in need of a Savior. And so sin is, is anything that's opposite of God, that's out of God's will. 
any, any of the thought or the wrong motive or, or anything that breaks that relationship with God. And so the Bible is clear, God is clear that all need that salvation. And so Jesus comes for all. That angel said, I bring good tidings of great joy for all people. Anybody that's fallen short of that standard, and that is everybody. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Romans 5, 8, God proves his own love for us and that while we were still sinners, everybody as sinners, Christ died for us. Paul told young Titus in Titus 2 and 11, for the grace of God has appeared with salvation through Jesus for all people. And so what that angel did, what that angel represented was that overflow of that celebration that was happening in heaven. And he came to earth, he came to those shepherds, he came to tell the, the good news, the great tidings that Christ is the Lord. What does that mean? That means that you and I, we don't have to be stuck in our sins anymore. It means when the scriptures tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It means when the scripture tells us that everyone is in need of salvation, that Jesus came to provide that salvation for everyone. There is a plan from God and God fulfilled that plan in sending Jesus. And then Jesus, after he lived that sinless life, he died on the cross, he was resurrected. And then the last thing he did before he ascended to live with the Father, to be seated at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us, he commissioned us, the church, he commissioned the born again believers to go into all of the world. And yes, that includes the Amazon, but it also includes our community, our neighbors across the street from our house, those that we work with, those that we shop with, those that's within our circle of influence. And so that baby born in that barn, it was good news of great joy because that was God's plan all along. And this is God carrying it out. Jesus Christ was that plan. Jesus Christ was the plan for the forgiveness of sins of all humanity. Luke chapter one, verse 77 to 79, to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. That's why he was born. That's why there's Christmas. That's why the angel came to tell of the baby born in that stable. To give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of our God's merciful compassion. The dawn from on high, the light, the very essence of light, the very beginning of light, the knowledge of God capital D-A-W-N, Jesus Christ. The dawn from on high will visit us. Verse 79, to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Luke tells us more in Acts chapter four. There is salvation in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to people and we must, in order to escape eternity in hell forever separated from God, we must be saved by it. So the event of Jesus' birth was a celebration in heaven that spilled over onto this earth and because of that, down through the ages, men have written poems and songs and sang about it. The birth of Jesus Christ. You remember the songs we learn as children, the anthems of the church. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Other songs like, O little town of Bethlehem, for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the angels keep their watch of wondering love. O oh, morning stars together, proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. 
O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. And that's the story that we're commissioned to tell. O come, all ye faithful. Sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation. O sing ye bright host of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. We're commissioned just as those angels were given charge to tell the message. You and I are commissioned to tell the message. The good news, Jesus is born and that's what Christmas is all about. And not only did he send the one angel, the militant, I believe, as he appeared, angel, but then because of what God was doing in declaring war on Satan, in declaring war on sin, in showing us that this was a battle and Jesus was the victor in that same account on down in Luke chapter two and verse number 13, that angel appeared, told them not to be afraid, told them that they would find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a cattle trough in the city of David. And then in verse number 13, and suddenly with that angel, there was a multitude of the heavenly, and look at that word, host. Host is a military word in the Hebrew. That Hebrew word host means the armies of heaven. Suddenly, and that's why the angel told the shepherds, don't be afraid, fear not. And suddenly with that angel, there was a host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to the people that God is showing favor to. The sinners, the sinners in the world, the lowest of the people, the shepherds, and God sent the host, the armies of heaven to say, there was war in heaven. Sin overtook, but this host comes to people, to the lowest of the people and the shepherds, and to say, this is a truce. This is peace. This is the remedy. This is the fix. This is how the victory is going to be attained through this little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger in the city of David. And we know the story. He grew up, lived a sinless life, was an itinerant preacher for three years, preparing the followers who would establish the first church. And then at the end of his earthly ministry, you'll remember we talked about it a few weeks ago, on the night of his arrest when Peter took his sword and Peter was going to, with the sword, bring about the victory and Jesus said, it's not gonna happen this way. God's peace has come. God has settled the accounts and salvation is available. And Jesus said by what, paraphrasing here, by what I'm about to do, just as one came into the world to pay the penalty for sin, one will go to the cross. One will lay down his life. That perfect, sinless sacrifice. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, Jesus Christ. And so that host, the army of heaven appeared with the angel of heaven to declare Jesus has come and peace has been brought. 
the peace with ourselves. You and I as sinners, when we know Jesus as Savior, when we accept what he did for us on the cross, when we ask him to forgive us of our sins, that peace moves in, that satisfaction is given and our sin debt is paid and we can have peace within ourselves. Micah chapter seven and verse 19, he will again have compassion on us. He will vanquish our iniquities. He will cast our sins into the depths of the sea. And Paul told those in the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so that announcement of Jesus on that first Christmas night by that angel and that host to those shepherds on those Judean hillsides was an announcement of peace, a peace within us a peace between us and others, a peace between us and God. And God wants us to see and understand there's something to celebrate at Christmas. Romans chapter eight and verse number six, for the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. In the midst of all of the chaos in our world today, we have to be very careful not to let the flesh rear its ugly head. It's very easy to say, well, I would. And we have to remember whose we are and that he has a plan and he's fulfilling his plan. And we as his children, as aggravated and frustrated as we want to get fleshly, we have to remember who we belong to. We have to remember who's in charge. The one in charge is not in Washington. He's not in Frankfurt. His kingdom is not of this world, but soon it will be. He's coming again and he will establish his kingdom. <clears throat> And just as sure as we're breathing his air in this room today, I don't know when, but I know it's coming. And we as citizens of the kingdom, we have to be ever mindful that others are watching us and we have to represent who we really serve. The mind of the flesh is death. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. And on down, Paul told those in the region of Rome, chapter 14 and verse 19, so then, because the mindset of the flesh is death and the mindset of the spirit is life and peace, so then we must pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. God help us that we live by that. That is something to celebrate. Remember the angels came from heaven to announce that Jesus was born. That announcement was the most important announcement that was ever made in the history of mankind. The only thing that will supersede that announcement is the trumpet sound. And Jesus splitting the eastern sky and those angels coming with him. And we which are alive will not prevent those that have fallen asleep. They're going to be coming with him. The graves are going to burst open. Those bodies will resurrect and be gloriously transformed and changed into an eternal body. And then those of us that are alive and remain, our bodies in the twinkling of an eye will be gloriously transformed and changed to be with him forever. The angels came to announce the birth, to announce joy, to announce peace. He gives us grace, he gives us forgiveness, he gives us meaning. He gives us direction. 
He gives us a personal relationship with God the Father. And he gives us an anchor for the mess of this life. Christmas, celebrate it just like those shepherds did, anxious to see the Savior because of what he did. When God came down, when God moved forward his plan, and as Matthew recorded in Matthew chapter 1, the Virgin Mary, she will give birth to a son. She will call him Jesus. This was the angel's announcement to Joseph because he will save his people from their sins. And all of this, matter-of-factly, all of this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. The virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son and they will name him Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. He's with us today. He lives in us today. Because he lives in us, we know a peace that passes all understanding. The world doesn't know that peace. God says, I gave that peace. That's my peace. We as citizens of the kingdom, we should live because we have that peace. We should share with others because we have that peace. The good news, great tidings to all people. Joe, come and lead us in a hymn of invitation, please, brother. As you stand, asking God what he would have us to do. We're preparing for Christmas. We're preparing for the gifts for the kids and the grandkids and the siblings and all of those that we know. And as we prepare and as much as we put effort into that, let's put effort into the greatest gift of all and that is sharing our story, sharing his story to those that we come in contact with, to those that are eternal souls. They're going to live forever somewhere. The question is where? Do we care? Pray that God give us a burden. God gives us the opportunity and especially at Christmas because people just let their guard down. They're thinking about Jesus. Even atheists, even atheists at Christmas time have their guard down. What an opportunity to share the good news to all people. Joe, what are we singing? Have you been to Calvary? Some singing, some praying, but all obeying that still small voice of the Holy Spirit. That gift of Jesus in the manger in Bethlehem all pointed to that gift of Calvary. Let's be busy telling others the good news of the gospel, what Jesus has done for us. All hearts clear. I want to remind the ladies tonight at five o'clock, they're having their Christmas get together. So all the ladies of the church, that'll be at Jones uh, and Lynn's at five o'clock this evening.
And so all of the ladies, you're invited. Uh, they always have a good time when they get together. They stay out all night, but they have a good time. Uh, so all of the ladies of the church, you're invited to their discipleship, to their get together tonight. And immediately following the service, we will have a brief business meeting. So just a quick transition after we dismiss. And then as we said, some will be, uh, some of the young people and Miss Amelia, I think are gonna be delivering the Christmas gifts this afternoon. So you pray for them. Uh, delivering gifts in a time of COVID, uh, knocking and running, I think is the plan, but uh, let's remember them and pray for those. We pray for the, the backpacks when we send those. We pray for the food baskets when we send those. Pray for the gifts that these children, that these families get, that it, it's not just a physical gift, but it's coming with the love of the church coming with the love of God and that this will make a difference in their lives. So let's pray for that as we have our dismissal prayer also that God's blessings will go with those as they're distributed this afternoon. Well, <laughs> if you could have seen her behavior this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, Braxton, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please?